but I'm in Balting Glass and I was actually vlogging a different area and I passed here and I just thought, you know something, it's too nice to miss. So I said I'd go live and this place is huge. And this is where I'm starting off now is the older section. So that one is quite overgrown. But we'll take a, a wander around and have a look. And we see some of those beautiful crosses there. some nice memorials. This one seems to have been cleaned up a bit. 1886. Hi Hazel. Hi Caroline. Hi Susan. Hi Nana D. How are y'all? This gorgeous one here. Yeah, it's cloudy. Hi Tom. Texas, brilliant. So this is 1894, um, Anna Maria Murphy. You're off Hazel, are you? Brilliant. Now it is quite windy where I am, so I hope you can hear me and I hope the picture is good. Look at this one. Isn't that gorgeous? And you can see that the lichen is covering it. So Henry is on one side and Anne is on the other. Anne died in 1897, she was 64. There's a Joseph there as well, 1919. And there's an 1810 there. Um, their daughter Ellen, she was only 14 when she died. So that's a gorgeous monument for the Kavna family. And we have a tabletop tomb there, as one of the subscribers pointed out to me. But that's what they're they're called. We have another one here that's and you can just see there in the background beautiful church and up at the top of that the hill right up here there's a huge cross right up on top of the hill. This is 1867, it looks like. Um, I don't see the name. It looks like Thomas, Thomas O'Neill, maybe. And we have that lovely cross there. And this gorgeous little white one. And that one is completely covered in that lichen. And it always makes it look like it's um, a material. So this is the older section. I won't be walking up there anyway, Hazel. <laughs> it's definitely not for me. And you can see this one here. Hi from Germany, Alexandra, how are you? We have a tomb in here and a cross as well. And completely overgrown. And those lovely rails and a rail here as well. South Carolina. Welcome. This is the Lawler family. Um, 1931 right up to 2019. And we have a marker there. It's just like an iron rod in the ground. Hi Nancy, how are you? And it's all kind of built up on a, a hill. So I'm going to have to watch where I stand. And we have this one here, it's a huge headstone. Erected by Paul Kehoe of California. United States of America, Darby Kehoe. Um, he was 27 when he died in 1847. There's a Patrick Kehoe here as well, and Mary Kehoe. 
and a Daniel Kiho. So that's interesting. His son Daniel is there as well. He was 45 in 1944 when he passed. And Martin Anthony, infant son of Paul, he died in 1950. So the United States, California, United States there. And we've a tomb there that's broken. We have this one here as well. This looks quite new. Erected by Michael Breen, Milwaukee. USA in memory of his beloved father James Breen. He was 65 when he died in 1881. His uncle Michael is there as well. Um, Michael was only 21 when he died. His grandfather William is there. He was 83. There's a Judith. She was 80 when she died in 1854. And above Michael, Brian then died in 1915, age 64. And there's Eliza down at the bottom. 1929 and then there's at the bottom it says William Billy O'Brien retired sergeant Calvary Corps Raheen Bolton Glass he was 70 when he died and he just died there in 2017 so I think we'll try head on up this way have a look at this church as well gorgeous tree there Oh, and it's a tower. I actually thought this was a church, so it's a tower, guys. Hi, Cameron. Look at that. Now, there is a, a plaque of some kind on the wall, but I don't think we'll be able to read it. No. Thanks for the five dollars. Um, the sun is right in my eyes. Certainly. Gallius. Thanks a million. Um, so this then is kind of coming into the newer part but you can see it's completely on a hill and I'm going to be out of breath not out. So we'll have a look. There's an interesting one there now flood and it looks like there's a racehorse on the back of the, the monument show you that first and then we'll read it so the sun is coming out guys there it is flood let me see if we can oh there's a lovely photo here in memory of Francis flood beloved husband father and granddad if I can stretch in across so he died in 2016 he was 86 so I presume that uh, Francis was a horse trainer. He certainly looks like he was kind of dressed in the the gear you'd see them, the hat and the the coat. So that was 2016. Francis Flood. I'll have to look him up. Now we have a beautiful one. My, this is gorgeous. We have photos as well. Peggy Short, 2015, and Johnny, 2019. And we have loads of uh, plaques with photos on it. And uh, that is beautiful. That one says Mammy. And we have a little robin. And you all know I love robins. And there's Peggy and Johnny. Rest in peace. So just in the background, I'm not sure you'll pick it up. That's Bolton Glass down there just behind that tower. I'll have to look into that tower, but you can see there's beautiful uh, rolling hills along here, countryside, and then right down into Balton Glass, little village there. So these are the newer ones. These are beautiful. And I'm starting to notice more and more photos. Uh, this is Sean. Sean passed in 2004. It's only 46. A new one there at the back of it. So you can see how large this is. Don't fall, Tom. Yeah, I know. I'm uh, prone to to falling and twisting ankles and all sorts. So I'm a bit more careful 
nowadays. This is Anthony, and Anthony was a Liverpool fan. And you can see that there, my uncle was so amazing. God made him an angel. Lots of love, Robin. Isn't that beautiful? And he only passed there in 2017. And you can see St. Bridget's Cross there on the headstone. We have another young man here, John Paul Flood. And he only died there in 2017. Sadly missed by his loving mother, Catherine, stepdad, Dick, his loving children, Sunita and TJ. So, John Paul left behind children as well. So you can see the gorgeous marble and loads of fresh flowers here as well. We have another beautiful one there. It says Doyle on it. And it has a cat, so we'll have to have a look at that one. And we have another beautiful church down there that I hope to go see. And I've just noticed there's a bill here, London, England, and he died in 2019. But I'm actually not sure I'd be able to get into these ones. Now these are extremely close together. First we'll read Mark. Mark was 52 when he died in 2015 and we've Doyle beside it and that's the one that had the cat there. And it's Bridie Doyle and Tony underneath it. But those are extremely close together. And you can see this just keeps going on and on and on. And can you imagine how hard it would be to bring a coffin up the hill or even dig out the graves? This was Martin Moore, devoted husband, dad and granddad. He was 61 when he died. And a lovely photo there as well. Ah, oh, thanks Hazel. Um, this is a doctor. Is it Magdalen Coyle? Nee MacDonald, 2013, age 66, and her beloved husband, Maliki. He died in 2017. But you can just get an idea there of how big this graveyard actually is. And we'll try and make our way up along. This is John Joseph Byrne. Born in 1923 and died in 2011. He was 88. And that's a great photo of John there. Isn't that lovely? So the reception should be good up here as I get higher and higher. And you'll see the, the surnames wrote on the back of the headstones here as well. I have this one with a little lamb on it. James Moore and his sister Julie. And we have angels as well. And another one beside it with angels. Every stone tells a story. That's true, Nancy. And we have a few of the older ones in mixed in between the the new lovely cross there and another one there as well and there's Conley there Devo and it says here we are we've lost a friend at 17 his life came to an end the tell a boy with the cheeky smile in class he would sometimes sleep a while that hoodie, that haircut, those DVDs, in the end he got his Xbox 360. And we'll just have a, a look around. And we we'll see a beautiful, beautiful photo of David. He was just 17 when he died 
in 2007. And you can see a soccer ball there. And there's Dennis and Olive Connolly as well there. So a beautiful poem. And we go on up these steps. We have some visitors coming in. So I think what we'll do is go across this way. And see if we can read a few more. Now usually the way it works is that we can kind of walk along in between them. But in this area, it's extremely hard to do that. This is Anthony Kearney, beloved husband, father and granddad, also baby Margaret. And we see just here in the little horse and cart with bubbles for baby Margaret. And obviously um, Anthony was a lover of horses. So rest in peace, Anthony and baby Margaret. And actually Margaret was born an angel. So very sad to see that. We're kind of getting up into the, the top part now. And there's a pretty good view of the area we're in. The church over there, the tower that sits in the middle of the, the graveyard. And actually from here I can see where I was before this live and um, that vlog will be up in a few days. We have a Chelsea supporter here. And a beautiful uh, statue of Prague there as well. Edward James Byrne, he was 62, his wife Margaret, she was 71. Christina Theresa Byrne and Catherine Mary Johnson. And I am actually going to try and uh, go down here if I can. We have a lovely one here. William Winder. He was 66 when he died. And Catherine is there as well. She was his wife and his son. He passed away the 9th of September 2009, age 63. And her son Jimmy, age 75, 2010. And we have another gorgeous photo there. But um, there's one here that's caught my eye. Patrick Paddy Hughes and his wife Annie. Let's have a look at this one. We can see some butterflies, little windmills, loads of fresh flowers. I'm not sure I can zoom in, but I can't get in any near. Um, but we have a gorgeous photo. Oh, I can. Sorry now, bear with me. We have a gorgeous black and white photo of when they first met and a more recent one. Isn't that gorgeous? So Patrick Paddy Hughes and his wife Annie. Patrick was 81 and his wife was 74. And they died a year apart. And uh, we often do see that. Unfortunately we're they pass on quite close together. I'm going to try and make my way down. As I said, I've never seen graves so close together and it makes it very hard to walk down amongst them. I see another beautiful one here of angels and three photos. Joseph O'Toole, aged 51, he died in 1978. His wife, Annie, 1989 and then their beloved son Clement he died in 2002 and he was only 35 and we've three gorgeous photos there Joseph Annie and Clement and we've Desi Dennis sorry Dennis Murray behind him 1929 and this is Theresa Pendergrass 1977 her husband George is there as well but uh, the area here is just breathtaking. And there's a good picture there of the church. And 
and vault and glass. So we go back down, but we we'll go down the other side and have a look. Just have to be careful stepping down off the hill. We have another photo in here, and this is Bridget. Bridget Byrne and her husband's Bill then as well. And you can see Bridget there up at the top. Bridget died in 1981, aged 55, and her husband Bill, 2003, aged 91. And we have another photo in this one in here. And some flowers and some beautiful plaques and ornaments. We have John Barry there, 1981, aged just 17. And here we have Anne and what looks to be an altar behind it. So this was erected in 1984 by the Cemetery Renovation Committee and uh, this place is definitely kept well we have a gorgeous little statue here, a little angel ah look at Sandra Doyle died August 1990 following an accident and she was just four and we have beautiful um, fresh flowers here for Sandra and Sandra was absolutely gorgeous. And she's there with a gorgeous fresh sunflower. So just four and that beautiful little statue there. And so sad, so young. And more fresh flowers here. And this is for Michael and Mary. Gorgeous photos there of them. And you can just see the variety of um, headstones and monuments here. We have a little cross here and it looks like Catherine. Another one with a horse here, Patrick Burke, 2001. And if I can get down amongst these ones, we have a few nice ones. Edward Ned and his wife Sarah, and some lovely photos on those, on that headstone there. And this brings us down another step. Now, yeah, just bear with me. This is John Kehoe. Uh, died 6th of September 1984. He was 53 and his sister Vera is there as well. And there's a beautiful monument as well. John Cullen with the angels. and his wife Annie and John was 74 he died in 2003 and his wife Annie died in 2004 aged 74 so great photos on those ones some of these high crosses then here as well 
Michael Anthony, 1985, aged 36. And also his twin brother, John Joseph, who died young. And her mother there is there as well. She died in 1991, aged 71, and her father, 1998, aged 91. So we have a whole family buried underneath this beautiful cross. Very sad to see twin brothers. And this one has a sheep on it. And gorgeous fresh flowers. There's another beautiful one here. Oh, look at this, we have a donkey on it. Elizabeth Lizzie Barrett and her loving husband, Henry. He was 88 when he died. You can see the donkey there and the angels. So we've kind of made our way Hi John, yeah, they are beautiful I'm going to try and make my way back down see these gorgeous high crosses along here and it's windy now guys so you'll have to forgive the audio look at the amount of crosses wow just to give you an idea there is so many here these are obviously the starting back to older ones again. This is erected to memory of Mary Gaffney, 1935, her sister Annie Dempsey. And there's something on the top of it. Any ideas? Sorry, now, any ideas what that is? Was there something there and it's fallen off? So yeah, some older ones here now again. What you can see has, you know, it goes down the hill. These kind of go down in, in little steps. And uh, it makes kind of burial extremely hard. Although these are the older ones, but it's more or less the same up near the new ones as well. That's 1945, John and his wife Sarah, 1948, and their grandchildren twins Paddy and Fidelma Heffernan, 1929. So that's, uh, that's very sad there, but they're not forgotten either. Now I want to try and make my way down. But those crosses they really stand out amongst amongst them all to keep birds off I'm not sure I've never seen anything like it so it gets a bit harder to walk through here another beautiful one here Annie Burn, it looks like 1970 something on that one. So I want to try and get out onto the little path again. And you can see the rows there of 
of all those crosses. There's so many in here. And I actually can see those needles on a few of those high crosses, guys. So that is interesting, as I've never seen that before. This one now has lovely angels on the sides of them. And I'm just going to show you these ones with these needles, we've called them, because I'm not quite sure what they are. So that one there has them. That really high one. If I can get in close enough. Right up at the very top. You probably can't pick it up there in the in the sun. And that one as well. Now I wonder is it something to do with the height of them? It would be something to do with lightning lightning, maybe. And we've another one down here with the same thing. He's like I think they're they're like a plastic needle. I might be able to get in near to this one. And there's a few of them with the same thing on top. This one here has them as well. This is Thomas John Wall died 2nd of May 1910. He was just four. Michael Francis Frank Wall died 4th of October 1911, aged one. Henry Wall died September 1918, aged 48. Henry Joseph Wall, who died as a young adult. Patrick Joseph Kehoe died 17th of April 1965. Or sorry, 35. Um, there's a James Leo Wall, 1942, aged 39. There's a Marta Wall, 1943. There's a Josephine Wall, 1970. Um, there's Mary, Margaret, and Evelyn, and an Esther there. But those are what I'm talking about. And you can probably see them there. So would it be lightning, guys? You think? But this is quite an unusual plot. It's extremely long. And has the step there as well. Thanks, Nancy. And... This brings me to this beautiful one. Lovely cross with her Lord. And this is Cassidy, Margaret Cassidy and Patrick Cassidy, 1909 and 1917. And her daughter Bridget is there as well. She was only 17 when she died. A gorgeous, with the sun behind it then as well. Absolutely beautiful. And we have some more down along here. Nineteen oh six, nineteen forty six. And it's amazing because these older ones were once like this, stood proud. And look at the detail on that one. That is absolutely beautiful. That's all like the Celtic cross on it for Kavanagh, Patrick Kavanagh, 1977 and his wife, Sarah. We have McGrath here. And it always makes it easier if the, the surname is on the the back of it they're much easier to read if you're looking for family and you're kind of to walk through so many that if it's on the back it kind of stands out so much easier to read So guys, that's more or less all we can do today. We're kind of coming back down along the path. And uh, we would have originally started over there. So thanks for joining me. 
and there's another little one and a close-up of those spikes or needles but uh take care god bless and talk to you soon bye bye